So this is part two of a two-week series. We started, uh, the first message was last week, Matters of the Heart. Did you guys like that message? Yeah, I want to encourage you, if you did not, if you weren't able to be here, you didn't hear it online, to go back, listen to that message. It's, it's, a, it's a great just foundational key that we need as believers to be all that God has created us to be. I will recap it a little bit. So our theme scripture for last week was Proverbs 4.23, and it says, above all else, above all else, above all else, guard your heart, for out of it come the issues of life. And I gave you, if you could throw up that next slide, this, you know, I'm a great graphic designer. Don't y'all love this creativity? I just, sorry, I did the best I could up there. But the thoughts of our heart, remember I told you that your heart actually thinks, as a man think in his heart, so is he. Your, your heart has neurons, just like your brain has 40,000 neurons. And when those beliefs get into our heart, they produce thoughts in our mind. Remember I brought up battlefield of the mind, right? We take every thought captive and bring it under the submission of Christ. So um, it, those thoughts in our mind become the words of our mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So once we start speaking those things, those thoughts in our mind, it creates the world we live in or it creates the life that we're living by the words we speak. Life and death are in the power of the tongue right? James talks about the tongue being the rudder of a ship that steers your entire life. The spark, the little spark in a forest fire, right? The tongue is powerful. Life and death is in it. Well, how do we, how do we tame the tongue? Well, we got to check the beliefs in our heart. So many Christians are being run ragged, trying to take away the fruit, the bad fruit in their life. And like, I'm going to quit cussing and chewing and running with those that are doing. And then a month later, They're right back doing it again. So my point was, quit working so hard to pick out the bad fruit in your life and realize what lies you believe in your heart that are producing that bad fruit and change the beliefs in your heart. Repent, believe the truth. Repent, metanoia, change the way you think. Quit believing the ways of the world and start believing the ways and truth of God about you and about God, and then the fruit will take care of itself. That's worth the price of admission right there. I haven't even started preaching yet. But, but remember, I, just, I was up here and I was going, Ugh. you never seen a fruit tree strain to produce fruit. Taking all the bad fruit of, out of your life is like picking all the apples off an apple tree and expecting it to start growing cantaloupes. If you have wrong beliefs in your heart, you will have wrong behaviors. If you have correct, biblical, godly beliefs in your heart, you will have godly behavior. Does that make sense? Okay. Guard your heart above all else because out of it come the issues of life. So today is part two of this two-part series. And our theme scripture this morning is Proverbs 13, 12. It says this, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is the tree of life. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is the tree of life. I hope you came hungry this morning because I got the full meal deal for you today. It's going to be a lot of scripture in here, okay? But so many of us are so sick. I shared some statistics last week that every 60 seconds, somebody's going to die of heart disease. Somebody's going to die of some heart-related condition. Men and women, right? Heart attack is the biggest killer of anybody, male or female, in the United States. And I believe that that is a natural fruit for a spiritual root. Hope deferred makes the heart sick but a longing fulfilled is the tree of life. Will you pray with me? Jesus, I pray you'd come like you do, that you would be you. We give you permission to be you in our lives. Lord, I believe that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Holy Spirit, I pray you would be our teacher. You would be our counselor. You would be the one that enlightens us to learn about you and have our hearts healed. 
In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. So we're going to jump in here. Hope, hope, let's define some of these terms. Let's define hope together, right? Hope is a feeling of expectation, a desire for a certain thing to happen, right? Pretty simple. It's a desire for something to happen. A a, a mother who's not conceived yet desires to have a child. A, a, a man who doesn't have a family yet wants to be married and have children and, and build a legacy. There's these yearning, these longing, these, these things that we hope for in our life. They're, they're bigger. They're, they're, they're bigger than money can buy, right? They're bigger than you. You can't really do them on your own. I remember when our house burned down, uh, we had good insurance. Insurance is great, but it can never give you the things that you hoped and longed for in your heart, you know, the things that were, were worthless to the world uh, that, that you can't even list on an insurance, you know, claim were priceless to us. I mean, my son's first uh, game ball in, in, in T-ball when they won, you know, they went undefeated that year and every one of his friends had signed it and they didn't know how to spell their name real good and they're all going to college together now. They're, they're, they're best friends. They, we grew up in the same neighborhood. I've, I've shared life with these families and with all these little boys. And this one little meaningless baseball was priceless to us. I wouldn't sell it to anybody. You see what I'm saying? Because it, it represented something in my heart. It, it was a longing in my heart, right? So deferred, deferred to put off an action or event to a later time, to postpone, to delay it's, it's not happened yet. I want it to happen, but it's not, it's not happening yet. I, I know that I am not living the life that I want to be living right now. When I see myself, I really want to be living this way, and I'm doing all I know to do. I'm praying all the prayers I know to pray, but for somehow, some reason, it's just not happening. My hope is postponed. My hope that I have in my heart is delayed. I know I want to be married. I know I want to have kids. I know I want to start that business. I want to write that book. I know I have these things in my heart that I want to do, but it's, it's delayed. Longing, a yearning desire, a yearning desire. This is more than material things, like I said. It's more than material. This is bigger things, things that you can't do. Just can't work hard to get it. Just work harder. It's all on social media. Shut up and work hard. Yeah, that's very encouraging. Tree of life. Last term we're going to define tree of life. A tree in the garden of Eden whose fruit imparts eternal life. A tree in the garden of Eden whose fruit imparts eternal life. If the object that we hope for is not enjoyed as soon as expected or if it is delayed at any length of time, the mind becomes uneasy, the heart sinks and fails, and the person is dispirited and ready to give up all hope of enjoying the very thing they are hoping for. I know I'm not talking to anybody in this room because all your dreams and hopes have been fulfilled, right? What happens is we have these hopes We have these dreams, we have these desires, and they are delayed and delayed and delayed. And then we just start having thoughts like, man, I guess this is just my lot in life. I just guess this is the way it is. Nothing's ever going to change. This is the way my life's going to be. I've tried and tried and prayed and prayed, and nothing seems to be happening. I give up. And I choose to get up every single day and every day it's harder and harder to get out of bed and lead this life, putting one foot in front of the other and my heart begins to get sick. So then I begin to fill my life with eating to help my emotional pain with working out too much or not working at all or working too much, sleeping too much. Oh, I need some medication. I drink alcohol too much. I smoke this. I do whatever I need to do to help medicate my heart because my heart is sick because my hope has been delayed. My longing is not fulfilled. I am not experiencing the tree of life. And then cortisol builds up. Cholesterol builds up. 
things that our body is not designed to have and do start happening in our body. And the next thing you know, every 60 seconds, somebody is dying of a heart attack. Are you with me? What do we do? What do we do? Do we just start taking care of the fruit or do we get to the root? Our hope being deferred could be deliverance from some kind of evil in our lives. Possession of some good thing, some provision that we need or healing. Maybe you need healing in your body. It's just delayed, delayed. Maybe it's forgiveness from somebody. Maybe it's a mother who des- desperately wants to conceive a child, parents who are heartbroken and longing to see their child come home and know Jesus. Maybe it's a couple that had a dream for a great marriage and family and legacy and, and traditions and, and memories, but all they do is fight and argue and divorce is facing them. A person struggling with depression, addiction, anxiety, alone, ashamed, cannot tell anyone, I'm in this prison, how do I get out of this thing? I know this is not the life that I was made to live and yet I am living it, how do I get out of this thing? Let me tell you right now, you were made for the Garden of Eden. As crazy as that, as that sounds, prior to Genesis 3, that is what human beings were made to experience, eternal life, complete provision. There were no gardens planted at that time by man. God had did, he did everything, created man, and then created the day of rest. Why could you be able to rest? Because everything was already done for you. You didn't have to work by the sweat of your brow and toil. That's a result of the curse. That's a result of the fall of man. You were designed for paradise. And that's why most of you in this room want to vacation on an island with a little fruity drink with an umbrella in it, and we call that paradise. That's actually kind of biblical. But our paradise is, I'm sorry, Pastor Jared. Sorry, Pastor Jared. But you are on an island, you know, probably with a lit. No, I'm just kidding. But you're created to live in the Garden of Eden that was already set for you to show up and pick fruit off the tree and eat it. We didn't even have to wear clothes. We lived forever. There was no sickness. There was no disease. That's what you're designed for. And when we hope, when we hope for things and we hope for a great life, you are actually operating according to how you've been created. So it's not like God is trying to dangle these hopes in front of you. Oh, dirty trick. I just made you want those things, but I'm really not going to give them to you. That would be an evil father. And he is not that. If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father? That's None of that's in my notes, by the way. That was great, Dustin. I'm going to preach myself happy over here. Oh, Lord, help us, Jesus. I believe you, God. I have prayed and prayed, but nothing is happening. Let me tell you the story about the woman with the issue of blood in Luke 8, 43 through 48. A woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me, Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people were crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. The woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Let me explain the woman with the issue of blood. For 12 years, she had an issue of blood. She bled. She could not stop it. No matter what offering she brought to the temple, no matter what Pharisee, Sadducee, doctor at the time, she tried everything and nothing worked. 
She was unclean. In this culture, in this tradition, if someone was on their cycle, they are unclean for seven days. She was unclean for 12 years. She would have to announce anywhere she went in public, she would have to say, unclean, unclean. If any family members came, if anybody she loved and wanted to be with, they would be unclean for a period of time. And they would have to do ritual washings and all these traditions according to the book of Leviticus just so she could get clean. And she had to work and work and work and work and alter her life completely and her family's life because she had an issue of blood for 12 years. Do you think her hope was but deferred? for a little bit do you think her heart was sick do you think she had some kind of longing in her heart for her family for her friends to be some kind of something in her neighborhood and her culture she had these dreams and desires but they were completely unattainable do you think she prayed do you think she begged God In Scripture before this, it talks about the crowds were so tight around Jesus, they were crushing him. They were crushing him. I, I'm Gen X. There's not a lot of us alive. Have we got any Gen Xers in here? Yeah, we're too extreme and we don't live. I'm not going to curse us like that. We are bad to the bone. I'll say that. Like, but we, used to do, we started the original mosh pits, right? You been in a mosh pit, Big John? Okay. If you ever wanted to feel like you were being crushed, I've literally felt my soul leaving my body in a mosh pit at a Red Hot Chili Peppers concert, <laughs> getting squished, you know, so bad. Gutting. I mean, and this, it said Jesus was being crushed. And not that he was being crowded. He was being crushed. And this woman, this woman who could have every excuse, I've tried everything. Why should I even go to Jesus? I've tried everything. It, it's not going to work this time. I've prayed that prayer. I did that fast. I read that devotional. I took that pill. I went to that doctor. I saw that chiropractor. Nothing's worked. She put that all aside and she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. She fought her way through the mosh pit, throwing elbows, knocking people out to get to the feet of Jesus. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is the tree of life. She experienced the tree of life. When what we hoped and wished for comes, when there is an accomplishment of our longing, our yearning, we are grateful and are fulfilled and experience great joy. That's Jesus. You can get the car. You can get the house. You can get the job. You can get the promotion. You can get all that stuff. You're still going to be left wanting. I remember when I went to the Grand Canyon, I was so excited to go to the Grand Canyon. We drove, went to the little tourist spot. I went, I was, <laughs> oh. It's beautiful. It was wonderful. But it didn't fulfill me. The spiritual presence of Jesus and communion with him is what believers hope and wait for. Don't get it twisted. Whether you realize it or not, whether you would agree with it or not, Jesus is the only one that can fulfill. That's it. Thank you for that thunderous applause. The spiritual presence of Jesus and communion with him is what believers hope and wait for. Sometimes it's deferred. We think for a long time, and at least we think so, which makes us uneasy and our hearts sick. Point number one, if you're taking notes, Jesus is a tree of life. Jesus is a tree of life. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. What does the tree of life do if you eat from it? What does the tree of life do if you eat from it? Come on, just spit some answers out here. Gives you life. It's a tree of life. The fruit's life. What kind of life does it give you? Eternal life. You guys are so good. I'll check you out. Yeah, check you out. 4.0, 4.0. 
What does Jesus do when you ask him to come into your life? What does he do? He gives you life. I've come to give life and life more abundantly. Well, what kind of life does Jesus give you when you bring him into your life? Eternal life. True life gives what? What does Jesus give? Man, theologians up in here. So what is eternal life? What is eternal life? If I ask anybody in the room, we'd probably get several different answers, but the Bible defines the Bible. It's in John 17, 3. It says, and this is eternal life, just in case you were wondering, John 17, 3, that they may know, have intimacy with, know the word gnosko is have intimacy with, like the way a man has intimacy with a woman, that they may know, have intimacy with you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Eternal life is having intimacy with God. That's what eternal life is. Jesus gives eternal life. When you eat of him, he gives eternal life. Let me read you this scripture. I'm going to skip ahead to John 6, 53 and 58. My, my, oh, the pro presenter's out. Oh, well, then never mind. I can skip around all I want. Y'all wouldn't know. So John 6, 53 through 58, if you're taking notes, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. When a longing is fulfilled, the reason I worship and jump around and yell and scream, by the way, yelling and screaming is not weird in church. If everybody can do it at a baseball game and everybody can do it at a football game or a hockey game, how much more should we do it for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? I mean, he did save us. Ain't nobody else died for us. Dallas Cowboys didn't die for anybody. Dallas Cowboys. Don't even get me started. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, the reason I jump and scream and yell for Jesus is because I remember when he gave me life. I remember when my hope was deferred and my heart was sick and my longing got fulfilled when he answered this prayer and he came into my life and he gave me a beautiful wife. He saved me from a pit of hell. I got great children, a home, peace of mind. I can go to sleep. There's so many things he's done for me. Yes. And there's things he does for you too, but what we think about is all the stuff that we want in the world and not all the stuff that he has for us. We're too occupied with getting instead of realizing and receiving all his giving. Jesus is a man that can fulfill you. He's the hope and longing and yearning you have in your heart. He's the tree of life. We didn't have access to the tree of life. After the fall of man, we didn't have access to it. Genesis 3, 22 through 24, and the Lord God said, the man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil, because he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He wanted to do things on his own, by his own strength. That's what eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. There it is, eternal life. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. And after he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim with a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way of the tree of life. We didn't have access to this tree. We didn't have access to this life. We didn't have access anymore to eternal life until Revelation 2, verse 7. Whoever has ears, let him hear. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give him the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Because of Jesus, because of Jesus hanging on a tree of death, the cross of Calvary, now we have access to the tree of life again, to eat, to partake, to be fulfilled and satisfied, those yearnings in our heart to be fulfilled. We can eat and partake of him. Jesus isn't just interested in providing for your needs. 
He's not a prison warden just wanting to provide three hots and a cot. Jesus is also interested in the yearnings and desires and longings of your heart. He's interested in your hopes and dreams. Jesus, point number two, Jesus fulfills the longing inside of you. Psalm 37, four says, take delight in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. It doesn't say take delight in the Lord and he'll give you what you need. I'm not talking about Jesus being a genie, being Santa Claus. I'm talking about the things that he wants to give you. And let me tell you what he wants to give you. It's, it's the word sozo, S-O-Z-O, sozo in the Greek. It's four things. Forgiveness of all sins, deliverance from all enemies, healing of all sickness, peril, or disease, and provision for all needs. And I guarantee the things that keep you up at night, that keep me up at night, that I worry about, the things that I'm longing for, like the woman with the issue of blood, will fall into one of those four categories. Jesus satisfies. Jesus gives eternal life. Jesus is the tree of life. Jesus fulfills the longing in our hearts. Matthew 6, 31 through 34 says, so don't worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So there it is again. There it is again. What we do is we seek these good things in life. We seek these good things. Whatever it is, just you, you name it, whatever it is. They're not bad things. They can be good. I, I want a promotion. I want the car. I want the house. I want my business. I want this. I want that. You, you, these different relationships. You want these things. You're like, oh, God, yeah, by the way, I go to church. I tithe. I read my Bible. Look at all this great. Well, the tail doesn't wag the dog. No. What that scripture is saying is seek him first, his kingdom, his righteousness, and all that stuff that concerns you is added unto you. It's a big difference. I've preached y'all silent. Seeking anything other than Jesus, even good things, to fulfill the longing in your heart will only leave you wanting. Just like looking at the Grand Canyon. Oh, is this it? What's next? Striving, performing, getting on a rat wheel or hamster wheel, whatever you call it. Endless. Doesn't satisfy. Let me save you a lot of gray hair. Jeremiah 29, 13. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. You want to find Jesus? There's a promise right there. You want him to fulfill you? There's a promise right there. When you search for me with all your heart. You know, when I got saved, none of my problems and circumstances changed. I had a radical encounter with God in my kitchen. None of my problems changed the next day. I still had errands to run and a to-do list this long. It didn't go away, but my heart changed. My heart was not sick. A longing was fulfilled. The tree of life came. I received eternal life and all those problems, issues, and circumstances I didn't care about anymore. You can fix all your problems and circumstances. Just more show up. Now just show up. It's like effortless. They just come. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but take heart. I have overcome them all. John 6, 35 says this. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Psalm 107, 9. For he satisfies the longing of the soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things. 
Psalm 22, 26, the afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. Psalm 1611, if you're in your presence, there is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. If something else could do it, we'd already found it by now. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. He fulfills the longing. Really, the, the hope that gets deferred, we're, we're defer, we're def, we want to see Jesus move in our life. We really want to see Jesus move in our life. You know, even right now in, in the state of our culture and politics, and I don't want to get off into that, but I want to encourage you that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. I'm almost glad that all this stuff is happening because it's bringing all the closet Christians out saying, what can we do? It's bringing prayer out of the closet and into the public place. And you can see that there's gonna, there are all these Christians by culture are now becoming Christians by conversion and they're standing up and saying, no, 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 no. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You, you have a hope for your home for your culture, for your schools, for these things. And it's, it's waking you up. He's not delaying. He's waiting for us. We're not waiting on him. Say to those fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear, for your God is coming to destroy your enemies. He's coming to save you. Malachi 3.1, look, I am sending my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. The Lord you are seeking will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you look for so eagerly is surely coming. It's my favorite scripture. It's the answer to everything. Revelation 22.20. He who is faithful, he who is the faithful witness to all these things says yes. I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. That come, Lord Jesus, that word is the Aramaic word Maranatha. Maranatha. It's tattooed on my back from my neck to my love handle. Big red letters. Maranatha. And it means come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. That's the answer for, in my life. That's the answer to everything. Come, Lord Jesus. If your heart needs to be healed, it's because your hope has been delayed. He's not delayed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our healing comes, our healing of our heart is when, is, it's when that longing is fulfilled. That longing inside of us can be filled when we eat, when we take Jesus. I have a friend who shared a testimony with me, I think Thursday. Um, his mother had suffered from a couple things, but for a couple years. It's a godly woman no real reason why she would be suffering. There was a pain in her ear and, and some deep-rooted anxiety. And I had the opportunity to, to pray with her. And, and I'm like, you know, what do you, what do you think the root of this is? What do you think? She's like, I, I really don't know. I, I don't know, but I know that, that this is not the way that I'm supposed to be living. Her hope had been deferred. She had, she had taken some medication and gone to doctors and counseling and all these different things. And I didn't have the answers either. I didn't have the answers. So I said, okay, let's just pray. Let's just pray. And we prayed and there was no significant thing that happened at that moment. But I got a report on Thursday. Hey, Dustin, you know, when you, you prayed for my mom, she hasn't experienced one symptom all week. All week. I used to... I used to be on Facebook. I got kicked off Facebook, but I would keep these pictures organized 
because I, I would pray, Monica and I would pray for moms who couldn't conceive. They say, if you get pregnant, you're going to die or the baby's going to die. And I would keep these pictures. And it was like my trophy case. And I'd say, this mom had a baby, and this mom had a baby, and this mom had a baby. And look at this kid who's now a catcher of our softball team. She wasn't supposed to be born. And I'd show off what God had done in impossible situations. I would show off when the hope was deferred, but the longing got fulfilled, and it became the tree of life. And it was a tree of life for me. And I'm telling you today, I don't care what you are facing. God can come. He can come in your situation and flip it upside down. He's a miracle worker. He's a restorer. He's a redeemer. He is who he says he is. And he can do what he says he can do. And not only can he, he wants to. Do you believe? And if you don't this morning, I got enough faith for you. People struggle, give up. This life is freaking hard. But you're not alone. It's a real God. Not a genie in a bottle, not Santa Claus. A real God who cares for you, who hears you, who knows you. He wants to come in your situation. I can't tell you any way I I wish I could just give you this the woman at the well he healed everything about her she had five husbands and the one she was with wasn't even her husband the woman with the issue of blood the the paraplegic man who never walked his friends couldn't get in the room, so they dug a hole in the ceiling and dropped them down. He said, your sins are forgiven. And they said, how, how can you forgive a man's sin? How can you forgive his sin? You have no authority. He says, so that you know. The Son of Man has authority to forgive sin. Take up your mat and walk. And immediately the man jumped to his feet and began praising God. He can do it. He hasn't changed his mind. He can fulfill the yearning in you. Your heart can be healed. He can do things that money can't do. That our sophistication, our brilliance, our intelligence, he can do the things that we, if you could do it all on your own, you wouldn't need Jesus. In our weakness, his strength is made perfect. Not our strength. I'm not mad at you, I'm mad at the devil. Message like this is never over. I just have to stop. I'm going to pray for your longing and your hope to be fulfilled. But you got to hope. Got to hope again. Don't quit. What's the alternative to like not believing in Jesus? Like what? Why quit? Why quit? What are you going to get? Same thing you got now. Pray again. Hope again. Believe again. There's something specific I want to pray for. Uh, if you would bow your heads, please, everyone. There's, uh, if anyone has digestive issues, and I'm talking about pretty, pretty serious digestion things going on, you've been to the doctor, You've taken some medication. You've tried to change your diet, but there's things happening that it's almost debilitating. I believe the Lord spoke to me about you, and I believe if if he did that, then he wants to heal you today. If that's you, would you just slip your hand up? Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, the dream that I had, the lady had blonde hair. So... We're going to pray right now. Father, I think that you would give me that dream because you want to heal. I speak healing. 
right now in the name of Jesus. You said healing is the children's bread. And as sons and daughters of God, we lay access. We claim our access to the healing balm of Gilead, to the healing of Jesus. You said all the punishment for our peace was on your back and by your stripes we have been healed. And I speak healing. I rebuke bad bacteria and viruses. I rebuke constriction. I say be released, be opened up. I speak healing to every digestive tract right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, there's so many things, God. There's so many things, Lord, just like the woman with the issue of blood. There's just so many things we've battled for. We've believed you for, we've prayed for, God. We've done every, everything that we know to do on our own strength. But Lord, like the woman with the issue of blood, we want to come to you right now by faith, Lord, and hope again. Hope for breakthrough again, for reconciliation again, for redemption again. We believe you for breakthrough today. And Lord, I pray that you would hear the hearts of your people, the yearning, and you would fulfill the longing in them right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for miracles and breakthrough and mountains to be lifted up and tossed into the sea. In Jesus' name, breakthrough in Jesus' name, breakthrough in marriages, breakthrough in health, breakthrough in finances, the longing, breakthrough in wayward children. I pray for children to come home in the name of Jesus. I bind every spirit of fear and anxiety and depression now in the name of Jesus. And I declare you are a liar. You have no power. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up in judgment against us we shall condemn. This is our heritage as servants of the Lord. Fear, go in Jesus' name. We trust you, God, your word. There is no negative future outcome for us. It's not written in the word, but the word is written. It says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.